We need to talk about Deion Sanders. 42,277 people attended Colorado Spring game last weekend. And that's about the same number of people that were asked to get in the transfer portal, got in the transfer portal, or were cut last week. I really hope Deion Sanders knows what he's doing because I'm going to be honest. As a Pac-12 fan, as somebody who has a podcast covering the Pac-12, as somebody who played at a current Pac-12 school, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe I'm short-sighted. Maybe I don't see his vision. But my lifelong understanding of the game of football has led me to believe that in order to play football at a at any level, let alone a high level, you need football players. As of this moment, with over 50 scholarship players hitting the exit button since Dion's arrival, they don't have the ability to field a competitive team next year. And yes, I know that players will enter the transfer portal and transfer in, but Dion and Colorado aren't going to be the only players chasing the available prospects. Dion Sanders told Pat McAfee that one of the many reasons that he cut so many players was because in order to make room for new furniture, you had got to get rid of the old furniture. And while I'm sure the players and their families he got rid of will just love being described as old furniture as they've enjoyed not being given access to their 2022 practice film in order to help themselves land a new spot, I understand this metaphor. But the difference between furniture shopping to fill a new house, something I'm literally in the middle of doing right now, and hunting for the right prospects and pieces that have a higher pedigree than what you have already and more potential to help you win is that you don't bid on a once in a lifetime, one of a kind dining room table against 50 other shoppers. Dion seems to be assuming that his cult of personality is going to lead to him being the primary option for the country's elite displays, blue chip prospects. And maybe he's right. Betting on himself is what got him to the position that he's at right now. But you don't churn three-fourths of your roster unless you plan on winning right now. And in the Pac-12, you just don't win without depth. When he was at Jackson State, he recruited very well, D1 prospects, so he had a more talented team than the people he were playing against. Now, is he going to be able to recruit in, in one transfer portal a more talented team than USC or Oregon or Utah? Not so much. Is he really going to be able to restock, establish chemistry, and develop talent in time to start off with his first five games at TCU, then Nebraska, Colorado State at Oregon, and then USC? Bro, that sounds like 1-4 in four or 0-5 oh waiting to happen. And speaking of other Pac-12 coaches, you have master developers out there like Jonathan Smith at Oregon State and Kyle Whittingham at Utah. They'll take a, U a Juco DB or a two-scar skinny lineman from Texas and turn them into NFL draft picks. They are teachers, which up until recently seemed like the primary function of coaching. What does it say about your own faith and your ability to develop as a coach if you spend a few weeks around someone and tell them that they're better off anywhere except in your presence? Deion's son, Deion Sanders Jr., a.k.a., uh, well, he responded to the exact criticism on Twitter saying the game has changed because as a coach, you only have two to three years to make a team competitive or you'll be fired. So coaches are motivated to seek out ready-made ballers. But this assumes that the portal is full of exactly that. And it isn't. Outside of a few select prospects testing a still turbulent NIL market or just having some family circumstance that needs to change, it's almost all leftover musical chairs, like kids that were pushed out of Colorado, pushed out of Arizona, Northwestern, uh, wherever else, pushed out of there to go somewhere else. And they're all of a sudden going to make your team that much better? The only way to get ready-made ballers is to have the resources to entice them. Now, does Colorado have the cash more than USC or more than Oregon or, you know, a history of developing players so far? 
And if you have the resources, you need to be careful the way that you backdoor some of these transfers. You get a kid in trouble because you had a handler pull out a field to see if a backup SEC DB might be interested in a move to Boulder. Is that kid, his family, or his handler going to fall on the grenade if the NCAA comes knocking? Deion Sanders told a 24-7 reporter who inquired about the cuts that he knows what he's doing and it isn't his first rodeo. Where I'd actually push back on that is, it's everybody's first rodeo right now. This is a brave new world of college football and almost nobody knows what they're doing. They're guessing and hoping they get it right. But sometimes when the boundaries are undefined, it's actually better to move fast, break things and ask for forgiveness instead of permission. I hope for Colorado's sake and Dion's sake that this is one of those times. Let that sink in.